Hey, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is Secondary Topics of Equilibrium. Guys, we just got through Primary Topics of Equilibrium, and what did we learn? We learned how to do the equilibrium expression. We learned how to solve for concentration, molar concentration, that X. Um, and then we also found out how to find K if we've been given X. And so for Secondary Topics, we're going to be talking about today common ions, common ions, and things called buffers. And this will be totally make sense, and this will actually be even easier than primary topics. So let's get to it. Let's go to common ions. So let's say we have something just like we've had before, calculate the molar solubility, calculate the X, uh, when a 0.1 molar AgNO3 solution is introduced into a saturated solution of silver sulfate. So guys, let's. what am I going to always do right off the bat is I'm going to get my KSP expression. So I have KSP equals Ag plus squared, because there's two moles, times SO4 minus 2. Now guys, what type of ratio is this problem? It's a 2 to 1 ratio. So what type of problem would it be in the past? It would have been a 4x cubed problem, wouldn't it? Okay, But we have a common ion here. Now if we don't have a common ion, if we're just looking for the molar solubility and we don't have anything else in it, it's a 4x cubed problem, isn't it? But what are we going to do is they told us we have 0.1 molar of silver nitrate. We have 0.1 molar of this ion, this silver ion right here. We have what we call a common ion. We put some silver in there. Now, that silver concentration is always squared in my equilibrium expression. I know I have 1.2 times 10 to negative fifth is my KSP, and I don't know my sulfate, do I? So that is my X. Guys, common ions, secondary topics, is really easy because it's just less X's is what it is. It's not a 4 cube problem because I have a common ion. And so I have to square that point 0.1. I divide that into the 1.2 times 10 to negative fifth, and that gives me an X of 0 0.0012 molar or moles per liter. And that is my concentration of sulfate and that is what we call my molar solubility. Now, I want you to think of this, is if my concentration of silver goes up, the concentration of the sulfate will go down to compensate for that. And in the same way, if I put in some, something like, if I put in something like sodium sulfate in my equation, and my sulfate concentration went up, my silver concentration would go down, okay? They will shift in order to compensate to keep that reaction at equilibrium, okay? And that brings us to a thing called buffers, okay? What is a buffer? A buffer is, is a, it's a conjugate salt with a weak acid or base, and that will make total sense in a second. We have buffers all over the place. Our body has a lot of buffers inside of it. Our blood has, has a buffer. We have has carbonic acid, which is a weak acid. With it has some of the bicarbonate conjugate base in there, and it keeps our blood at a pH of 7.4. And what a, con what a buffer actually does is it resists change to pH, and we'll see how that, that gets done. Let's say I have a weak acid here. Let's say we have a weak acid like HF, okay? And so I have my H M plus and my A minus, my F minus in there. Now what do we know is going to happen in this weak acid is it will just slightly dissociate, won't it? It'll slightly break up. The rest of it is not going to break up. It's only going to break up about 5% into ions, into charges, okay? But what happened in a buffer is I put some of the A minus in. I put some of the F minus in there. I put some of that concentration in there. And what happened was that cancels out my weak acids. Okay? And so you can see how what is that going to do that's canceling these guys out? That is going to do what's called stabilizing my pH. It's stabilizing my H plus. Okay? And so if you think about it, What's going to happen is I'm going to put some of that in. And let me give you an example of what a buffer would be. Let's say I have HF, and that is my weak acid. Okay, a, uh, If I was going to make that a buffer, I need to put in it something like sodium fluoride or potassium fluoride, something with that fluoride ion, that conjugate base in there, that conjugate base. Okay, Let's say I have something like acetic acid, HC2H3O2. My weak acid, what am I going to put in there to make that a buffer? I'm going to put something like sodium acetate or potassium acetate or lithium acetate, something with that acetate, that C2H2O2 minus ion, that conjugate base. 
Okay, but if let's say I have a weak base like ammonia. Okay, here I have a weak base of ammonia. What am I going to put inside of that? I'm going to put a conjugate acid in. And what's the conjugate acid of that? Is NH4 plus. So something like NH4Cl, my conjugate acid, has that ammonium in there, and that is going to stabilize that pH and be a buffer. So let me show you how to do a buffer problem. Here is a it's a Ka problem. Okay, they gave us the Ka. So what are we going to do? We have Ka is equal to we have HF. That's our HA. We have our H plus, what it dissociates into, and F minus, my conjugate base. Okay, I know that this guy is 7.2 times 10 to negative fourth. Okay, and do you see how they gave us my 0.6 molar of HF? So he goes on my denominator because that's where my weak acid goes. And I have a common ion. I have a buffer here. I have a conjugate salt. I have one molar of potassium fluoride and this is the same as the concentration of my fluoride and so I'm gonna put that right up top 1.00 molar right where the fluoride is and who's the only guy missing the only one missing is the H plus so that is my X again it's just I have less X's so I take my 7.2 times 10 to negative fourth I multiply by 0.6 because he's on the bottom on the other side I divide by 1 because he's on the top on the other side there and I get an X to be 4.32 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. And that is my H plus. What can I do with that right away? I can, for pH equals negative log of my X, or negative log of the H plus, and I get a pH of 3.36. And what happened there was, if you remember what my titration curves look like, like that, this is the area where we are having a buffer done. This is the area where we have the buffer done because that buffer is stabilizing that pH. Okay, So w sometimes we calculate the pH from the buffer, which means we're trying to find our x, and sometimes we have to prepare a buffer. So let's see how we can prepare a buffer. Here again I have my Ka equals my H plus times my A minus, in this case it's the acetate ion, and my, I have my weak acid on the bottom. So my Ka is 1.8 times 10 to negative fifth, okay? And do you see how I know that my acetic acid is 0.67 molar? So that goes on my den denominator right there, okay? They gave me the pH of 4.55. Now what do I know about pH? pH equals negative log of the H plus. They gave me my pH is 4.55, okay? So how do I find my H plus? That means if I know my pH, I can find my H plus. How do I find my H plus? My H plus is 10 to the negative of my pH. So I do 10 to the negative of 4.55, and I get an H plus concentration of 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Where is that going to go? That goes right in place of my H plus, 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. What is my A minus? That's my x. So again, I do my algebra. My 0.67 gets multiplied. My 2.8 times 10 to negative fifth gets divided into my Ka, and I end up getting an x to be 0.428 molar, and that is my acetate. That's my C2H3O2 minus. Okay. Now, if you think about what do I do with molarity if I want to find grams, if I want to find mass. Uh, it's a multiply multiply problem. I'm going to take my molarity and multiply by 0.5 liters. That gives me moles. My moles are a one to one ratio with sodium at acetate, and my molar mass is 82 grams per mole. And that gives me 17.5 grams of sodium acetate. So, guys, what do we do here? All we're doing is common ions less x's. It's the same thing as primary topics, except we don't have x squared up top. We don't have 4x cubed. We don't have x squared. We have less x's because you put in a common ion. Hope this made sense, guys. I will see you in class, and I'll catch you on the flip side.